Gonna do a water pump, 2001 Chevy Camaro SS Z28 with a 5.7 V8. So we're gonna do a water pump. So what you wanna do is drain your coolant. You can go underneath and find the drain plug on the radiator, but usually I just I just undo a hose and I'll catch it underneath. So I'll undo the lower radiator hose, which is right here. It goes on a thermostat housing. It's got a spring clamp on it. You can use a pair of pliers or you can use spring clamp pliers, okay? And that's what it looks like. Undo that, drain the coolant. Undo your air cleaner box in the front. Loosen the boot from the throttle body. Unplug the mass airflow and your intake temp. Remove it. Take your air filter out now. Now's the time to clean it or replace it. Okay, since you got the coolant draining, want to undo the throttle body hose, which is right here. You want to remove the clamp, pull it off, unplug the IAC, TPS, and remove the three bolts that hold it onto the intake. And there are three bolts like that, and they got 10 millimeter heads on them. And I just pick it up. And also, there's another hose that goes right here to go to the radiator. Got a spring clamp on it, undo that one. And you can pick this up and set it aside. Okay? Now, if you noticed, it's loose already. I already took it off and I forgot that I was going to make a video. So, once you've done that, set your hose aside. Come over here to the tensioner. Undo your tensioner and remove your belt. This is a 15 millimeter on the tensioner. So you push it in, remove the tension, remove the belt off the pulley. Then you can remove the tensioner. The tensioner has two 15 millimeter head bolts. They're down, one's down here and one's on top. So you wanna remove those. So now you can remove your tensioner. Okay, uh, put that aside. Then you want to remove this upper hose. Got two spring clamps on it, or two radiator hose clamps, whatever. Remove this hose. Now you can gain access to the three bolts that hold the water pump on. And also down here by the thermostat housing, there's a a hose, not a hose, but a wire harness that clips on to here, so you want to unclip that. Okay. And then you want to remove the three water pump bolts over here, and they're a 10 millimeter head. There's three of them. One's still down in there just to get you an idea. There's one, two, three. And then there's three on this side also. You got one, two, three. That one's a little bit harder to get to, but you can still get access to it because this pulley is in the way of it a little bit. You can still get on it with a wrench and you can loosen it up and you get a corner swivel in there, 10 millimeter corner swivel and get that out. So then once you got those loose, then you can remove your water pump. And water pump will just come straight on out like that. Okay, and dump it in the pan because it's gonna have coolant in it. After you drained it, then you can remove your thermostat. To find out if it's a integrated thermostat or just a regular thermostat. Okay. So you need to know that when you go get your parts. I'm gonna replace the water pump and the thermostat. This is an integrated water pump, I mean a thermostat, but it's kind of part of the housing, okay? So now you got that. Then you come back over here, and you see the areas where the water pump bolt up to. You got the gaskets, okay? You wanna remove them if they didn't fall down below see that the parts of it just stick on there. 
okay so now you need to clean that surface up get it nice and cleaned up try not to remove any metal on it and then uh, you can get your new wire pump and start going back together okay I forgot to tell you on the wire pump it's got two coolant lines that go right here you want to remove those I forgot to tell you Yeah, right here. Undo your spring clamps, pull them off, and get a pair of pliers and just grip it a little bit and give it a little bit of turn to break the, the seal loose on them so they get stuck on there a little bit. And once you do that, you'll be able to just pull them off. Okay? Other than that, that's the water pump. Pretty simple. That's it. I'll go get my parts. Okay, you got your thermostat. Put a little bit of silicone around the base of it. And then put your O-ring on it and push it into the groove. Make sure it's in there all the way. Because if it's not in all the way, it'll pop out. So then now you can get your two bolts started. And then you can uh, snug them up and then you want to torque them. to like... Um, what is it? 90 inch pounds. Okay, they're just little bolts. Okay, you got your surfaces clean. Next you need to do is match up your water pump, make sure it's identical. <clears throat> and then next you wanna put a fine film of silicone on the water pump or on the gasket surface and then put your gasket on there and tap it down with your fingers. Then you want to put a fine film of silicone sealer on there also. I use ultra gray or ultra black. Do not use the blue. Okay, blue is terrible. Okay, so then when you get ready to put it in there, you want to put two bolts in. Ones you can get easy access to with your fingers. And you want to put the water pump down in there and get two bolts started and then go from there getting the other one started okay <clears throat> got my water pump ready to go got a little bit of silicone on the gasket i got a bolt on each side started easy access to get to make sure you got your ratchet close by you can feed this down in there Start one of your bolts and you start the other bolt with your fingers. Do not use the tool and tool to get them started. Use your fingers. Okay, but have your tool ready, handy when you do have it started that you can help run them in a little bit more. But do not start them with the tool. All right, <clears throat> before you put your water pump in there, you want to make sure you got this bolt stuck in there also. Because if you get any of these other ones started, it makes it harder to push this one in because it hits that pulley. So <clears throat> what you need to do is stick that bolt in. Just stick all three bolts in the holes and then uh, fish the water pump down in here and then get your bolts started. These, this one and this one with your fingers. You might have to be able to move it, wiggle it a little bit to get them to get going in there. Then once you get them started, you can work on the other ones to get those started. And then you can go ahead and start running your bolts up and snug them up equally. As you're putting your bolts in, you want to keep an eye on your gasket and make sure it doesn't drop out. Okay, if you don't see your gasket where it's supposed to be, then you're going to have to start over, okay? Same thing with the other side. You want to be able to see that gasket, okay? Okay, you got your six bolts snugged up. Now you need to tighten them to 11 foot-pounds and then do another pass to 22 foot-pounds. You should be able to get a socket on. Uh, if you got a brand new socket that fits nicely snug, it should work good, okay? 
So tighten them both, all six of them to 22 foot pounds, and then just go over them and double check them, okay? And then next you need to do is put your heater hoses back on and your lower radiator hose with your clamp, okay? And don't forget about the little clip that went in here for your wire harness, okay? Okay, now you can put your belt tensioner on. You wanna tighten the bolts to 35 foot pounds. 30 to 35 foot pounds, and then now you can put on your serpentine belt. Okay, here's your belt routing. Okay. All right, now that you get that done, now you can put this hose on there. I mean, if you don't like the spring clamps, that's fine, but I like them. I think they're fine if they're not bent or distorted or rusted. As long as they're like new, they work pretty good because they keep a constant pressure on the hose. Okay, not like a worm clamp. You tighten them up and then that's it. And as time goes on, they kind of get a little loose. And then plus they eat the, when they bite into the hose, they kind of eat it a little bit. Okay, get your hose on. Now it's time for your throttle body. Clean up the surface. If you got a new gasket, that's fine. Otherwise, you reuse the old one. Put a little bit of lube on it, like some Sil Glide. And then clean up your throttle body and clean up the surface. You can even clean up the plates right now. Make sure this isn't clogged with a bunch of carbon. All right, and now you can flip that over and get your three bolts started on that. Okay, you get your throttle body on. Got the three bolts started by your fingers. And then snug them up and then torque them to 90 inch pounds, 100 inch pounds. And then you wanna plug in your sensors and also put on your coolant lines with the clamp and a coolant line with the clamp. Okay, and make sure your throttle cable is where it's supposed to be. And then next, what we can do is Put our air filter in and our air intake tube, okay? And I don't see any bleeders on this. Usually it'd be, a, be like a, maybe a bleeder right here, but it doesn't have one, so it must just go back this way and through here. All right, so we're gonna put our air filter in now. And the, uh, induction tube don't forget to clean your air filter this is what i love about k&n or these type of filters everybody forgets about them you know they just get a lot of dirt look at the dirt nobody cleans them so i'll clean it and I'll put it back in. But if you just had a regular air filter, you can just throw it away and put a new one in. But these cost three times as much and you never clean them. All right, I cleaned my air filter. Now what you wanna do is look at your mass airflow. <laughs> There's some debris in there, so you wanna lightly blow some air through it the opposite direction. So, this is the direction of the flow. So you wanna go this way with the air, okay? So you wanna blow through here lightly just to get rid of the debris that's trapped on your screen. And then get some mass airflow sensors cleaner and just spray it in there a little bit and then lightly blow it. Okay, you cleaned your mass airflow. Put your filter in, put your cover on. Line up your air intake tube. Make sure it's not stuffed up in there. Twisted or whatever, fold it up. Tighten your clamp, plug your two sensors in. Now you wanna put some cooling in it. I got one of those funnel. It works pretty good. I like it. It works pretty good. You put them on there, 
make sure that it's tight in there with your seal and you can fill it up and then get like here in the middle start it up let it run just let it run and then it'll top itself off and just keep an eye on it that so it doesn't come all the way up here to the top and start flowing over okay because it has to belch all right so so once you got uh heat and thermostat opens up put your little plug in there remove your phone you know like that then you can put the extra into your overflow which is right here and then make sure that's in the middle and don't overfill it okay so once you got heat and everything functions properly and that's it and you're all set if i helped you out with this video that's awesome hopefully you can help me out by subscribing and i appreciate it